tune to the city of Mankind and Orlando. We're the only ones that are able to do this right now. Other, there are others that are working on it, and I know they'll accomplish the same eventually. Um, I have no desire, and our board does have, has no desire other than to be ser servants of, this, of the community we serve. But to understand that we were created for agriculture. Agriculture has gone down in acreage, but all the, all the new land that's being developed is north, where it's open, it's cheaper, and, there's not, and that there's no development of people. The problem is that you've got districts that are almost 100 years old, and their infrastructure is serving the area that's being developed. They need to get their infrastructure further out. For agriculture to have any future at all, they've got to be able to place their infrastructure further north to be able to continue agriculture in the valley. Otherwise, yes, the cities will just eventually take it off, use it all, and that will be the end of it. That's not what we were created for. Our job is agriculture. I think all of us like to eat. I know we all like to drink. And that's what, we, that's, that's what we're attempting to do, even in as small a district as we are. We're, out of the 22 districts you say exist, we're the fourth smallest. We're the fourth smallest. But we still have, as of this morning, we have 23 farmers in our district. We have 5,000 acres in our district. 90% of our land still qualifies as agricultural land. We are not done with agriculture. That was our first, that was our first responsibility, and we feel it still is one of our first responsibilities. I can ramble on and talk around a whole bunch of other issues, but I really, I really want to field any questions y'all have. This is informational, this is factual, that's what we're here for. We can't make good, y'all can't make good decisions if you don't have good information. And that's what we're here for. I will tell you most of the people in this audience are either, they're either district people or farmers. They're concerned. Because this is not a local issue. This is a valley-wide issue. It is not local. So as, way, as may, one way the district may go, all the districts will go. And once it starts, it won't stop. I will tell you that several people told us several times, could you just get that settled with the city of McAllen? Because we've got all these cities calling us wanting to know where their boundary lines are if, we're, if they're in our districts. So they can accomplish the same goal. I just keep telling us I don't start the fight. I never have started the fight. Our district is. Mr. Chairman, with that, I would just I would uh, take any questions y'all y'all have. Well, um, Mr. Brand, I saw a lot of the members scribbling notes while you were talking, so I suspect there's some questions. So, who wants to go first, Senator? Uh, I'll, I'll start a question, to y'all. Uh, thank you for being here, uh, um, Mr. Brand. I've known each other for a long time. Your dad, I actually, actually did legal work uh, for over Glenn, the mayor. Uh, but I, I disagree with you in terms of it's a value right issue. It's really an issue with irrigation with three. I think mean, the other water districts uh, work very well with local communities. Uh, they try to use old prices for the water that they sell to the city of the county. Uh, but in, in uh, your district, uh, how much of your territory is located within the city of McAllen? Within the city limits? Yes, sir. About 43%. The information that we have papers, it says it's 90%. Well, let's, you, you didn't get that from a freedom of information request, freedom of different information for your request from us, because that would not be true. And if anybody knows, we'd probably be the only ones that could tell you. Okay. So I, I, I can certainly give you that information if you're looking for it. Well, and, and what percentage of the district territory made up of agricultural tracts are uh, used for uh, farming purposes? I'm sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't. What percentage uh, of the water district will be territory is made up of uh, farming tracts? I'd say probably around 2,500. 2,500 acre feet. I mean, 2,500 acres are still farm tracts that are being actively farmed. There are several pieces of land that are inactive at this point, but uh, active, I would say 2,500. So you, you're saying there's, uh, uh, what percentage is that of the, of the uh, 
One total? Yes. 50%. I guess we are looking at the numbers and we will disagree on that. That's not the information we provided. Uh, who, provi who provided it to you? They brought it by Sue McCown and uh, from the city of Texas. Well, I don't know how they could have gotten it because they never asked for freedom of information requests from us either. Well, sometimes uh, people disagree, but that's okay. We'll try to ascertain the acceptable amount. I think they're important. Also, you know, there are several water districts that actually sell water to the city of McCown. Uh, and they all charge uh, a uh, lower rate per acre fit a lot of things you do. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you, when it, first, when it first came out, it was comparing us to two other districts. Um, both of those districts were only charging a delivery charge. In water district world, you have delivery and you have a water charge if you're using water as well. And so the reason ours, the first comparison was uh, to districts that are only charging a delivery charge. Our water, we are charging a water and delivery charge. And I would, I would tell you as well, Senator, that um, the last two uh, contracts that the city has gotten with other districts, right now they're paying more for that water than we are charging the city. Let me, uh, let me read you. Uh, you know, how many irrigation district number one uh, charges $65.89 per acre feet to the city of Calvin? Uh, district number two charges $51.26 per acre feet. Uh, United Irrigation charges $59.96. Uh, you, uh, one district with three charge one hundred and thirteen dollars and ninety seven cents. Well, please allow me to give this you the records. No, I, and I appreciate that, but I, I will tell you, you know, I, I both know that this year we've gone through. Everybody knows we we're, we're at ten percent incre increase in inflation. So we've had a ten, you know, inflation of ten percent. I think if you went back and checked those numbers, and with the rest of the districts as well, you said that all of them have gone up this year. I say all of them. I'm going to say over ninety percent of them have all gone up on their rates this year. But I will tell you again, if you take the example of the two the two thousand acre feet that they bought bought from Brownsville over fifteen years ago, the twenty year contract, they paid two point two million dollars for that con for that two thousand acres. They don't own it; they're just leasing the water. That's sixteen. Uh, you say acre feet. I, I do it. I do it in uh, thousand gallons because that's how you see. I count. Them. But uh, that's a sixteen point eight cents. A thousand gallons is what that is. So you're not you're not uh, denying that you're um, charging for the same water charge for the same amount of water from other water districts is much higher. No, it's not the same amount of water at all. We supply majority of the drinking water in the city of McAllen. You can't compare. They're not apples to apples at all. Well, where does it, the majority of revenue the water district from the three makes? Where does it come from? It comes from the city of McAllen because because our district, not like any other district that I know, and I could be corrected. There's only five districts that are involved with providing water in the city of McAllen. Our district took, when we started 23 years ago, city of McAllen, we took 10,000 acre feet of our agricultural rights and converted them to 5,000 acre feet of municipal rights. Didn't ask them to pay for it. Didn't ask them to charge for it. Just said, we're put that, but that's that's where you you we started with a delivery and water contract. Everybody else they've dealt with in the last two to 10 years, they've had to pay well over between, well, I would say 15 years, which is Brownsville and number one, they have paid out over $11 million. That's not my question. But well, but, but no one. The it, question is very simple, straightforward. Uh, the, the amount of money, the amount of revenue that you receive, yes. you receive cream, uh, from the purchasing of, uh, or selling of water, uh, is it ninety percent of the revenue comes from the city of McAllen? Because we made it that way by converting our own water. So you're not engaged now. Your major uh, mission or the major purpose of your mission is to provide agricultural water for farmers and ranchers. So we, not? we still supply about fifty-five hundred to seventy-five hundred acre feet of water a year to farmers. Twenty to, as of this morning, twenty-three farmers that we currently work with. So that's less than ten percent. I mean, I mean, I mean revenue. Uh, less than ten percent, but uh, but thirty five percent of our water. Well, over thirty five percent of our water. 
Well, and it's not the number that we have, so you know, I'm not, I, it, it's, it's what we're trying to have this hearing, and I'm not. Well, I'll, I'll give you everything I just said, I'll give it to you, Ronnie. Well, uh, you don't want it. So, well, I, I don't, how do you see, uh, what if this with me uh, track uh, his land that he owns? I mean, how do you keep uh, track of the land that you own? That under your jurisdiction, your boundaries. Senator, if you uh, looked at any water district today, when they started, when they were started, ours 100 years, others, I think all the rest of them were probably within 20 years of us, before or after. We had boundary lines, just like the city limits, the city of McAllen or any other city has boundaries. But over the years, I believe it speaks well for the water districts that if someone came and said, you know what, I'm not using any water, I don't want any water, my property is all brick, concrete, asphalt, and I don't want it, and I don't want to pay the flat rate anymore, I can tell you that the districts have been very accommodating and say, okay, fine, we'll take you out. Now, the reason, I think one of the reasons we're, that we've been okay with that is because it gave more water available to the people left in the district, which is always, water is going to become a bigger problem than it is now. And so, if you were to look at any district right now, it would look like Swiss cheese. It would look like Swiss cheese. So, for me to tell you what our boundaries are, I can tell you what they were originally. They are no longer. So, about 90%, I, I guess uh, your uh, one of this from a three steps where it can give us an increase over the years. I'm sorry? The amount of farmland, the boundaries, your boundaries get smaller and smaller every year? <coughs> they have. And then some of that has to do with the development, not such as farming, not as much the farming has, has been the development of the city of McAllen and uh, the city of Hidalgo. But once they're completely developed, they no longer need that water. So, uh, you know, and, and I would say we've, we've, we've lost more land to urbanization than we had to farming. People come and say we don't farm anymore. In fact, we can't do that. As long as it's open land, we have to declare it as agricultural. Well, I think in the past, um, through a different uh, legislation we filed, uh, we had guaranteed uh, whatever farmers are left, which I think, I don't think it's going to agree, it's a lot less than that from the records that we have, uh, uh, guaranteed the water for them uh, at uh, the uh, same rate that we charge them. Uh, so that C. McAllen has to pay an extra million plus, 1.8 million plus a year uh, because they have an extra layer of, of bureaucracy who might have missed the three. Senator, I will tell you that I and several of my board members have sat down with previous mayors and city managers multiple times to try to establish a relationship and communication. And that every time we've told, we've asked them, well, how do you think you can run it more efficiently than we can? And without exception, they have always said, we cannot run it as efficient as, as, efficient as you do. I have two girls in an office, five men who are public servants, and about nine employees that cut grass and keep the canal and the pumps working. Now, you can't get much meat leaner than that. That's, that's, that's what I'll tell you about that. The, um, you have another question, I'm more intrigued on the other ones. Well, the, the other issue, I guess, uh, um, many times, uh, at least the allegations are, if we have uh, elections, uh, part of the territorial uh, part, there's part of our district, certain landowners are disqualified and moved out and dropped uh, as, uh, as being part of our district of three, uh, if they oppose the policies of our district of three. No, sir, if you attended any of our meetings for all the years that I've been in the water district, uh, you have a board with the Southern Integrity. There's five men. We take out people who no longer, we follow, the, we follow the state code, which addresses if they have not used water over a given number of years, then you take them out. If they, have, if they request to be taken out, you take them out. If, if you so did not desire, the board desires. We don't take anybody out just because they, they voted wrong. Now, we have other people like some city, it's ex and city employees, who try to uh, be involved in our elections by going out and buying one square meter of land so that it can run to our, for our board in our last election, which was the first one we've had in 12 years we, where we've had people actually contest or challenge the, the incumbents. Now that, if you want to talk about that, I'd be happy to talk about that as well. 
because there's nothing there is nothing right about that. And, and uh, Mr. Brown, is there, do you have um, I mean, who's qualified to vote in a voter district election? Well, I'm glad you asked me that because you know, in in uh, irrigation districts, you have to own land and you have to have, have your taxes paid. Um, There's a back tax, right? Yes. In a water district, it's just like the city. You live in this district, you get to vote. Doesn't matter if you use water or not. Doesn't matter if you pay flat rate or not, you get to vote. That's a zero water district. And that's only in control and improvement districts. And you have a role uh, on those uh, voters? No, sir. What we do is, um, and we were asked for that several times in this last election. We kept telling them we don't have a list. Neither does the city of McAllen. They, we both get them from the county. And so what we do is whenever the, the uh, election's coming about, and we hired, for this last election, we hired two election attorneys that do nothing but elections to make sure we followed it by the law. And so we have a list like the day before absentee starts, and then we get an updated list so many days before the election because you have 30 days to, to register. And, I, and you'll forgive me, because I, I don't have that in front of me right now, but I think when we start absentee, there's still time to register. So that's why the county gives us an additional list, or a you know, refined list, right before the, the main election itself. Do you understand that? So there's a list of, of, of voters who are qualified uh, to, or a list of people who are qualified to vote in the elections in one district number three? Well, here's what we do. That's not what I asked. Well, I, you want an answer? You, you know, that's not a one one word answer. Okay. You know, we, we look at <laughs> we look at the map of where all our land is, and then we find out what county precinct they're in, and then we ask for all those precincts. It's like I don't know thirty different precincts, and then we have to have our engineer and our and our lawyers look at that and pick out the people in our districts. But we have to make that list because there's not anybody that has it. Not for one water district in the valley, when you get a list from the county, that is a list they use to vote for voters. If that was a much easier way, I would be all in favor of it. So how, how, how do you uh, decide when someone shows up to vote and they say they live within the boundaries of water district number three? How do you decide whether they're going to vote or not to vote? Well, sir, I tell you, we, that was tested many years ago. We had the mayor and the city attorney come and vote. And we let them vote knowing they weren't in the district. Well, they, you know, that's okay, you get a provisional vote, and then the county decides. We don't decide. Is that from your uh, list? Do what? Is that from the list that you use as qualified voters? That's the list we get from the county, yes. Uh, do, and is that clear? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you have uh, an uh, election judge, or who do you want to ask these questions? Man? Well, yeah, you have to have election judges for election. So, you know, at one time, I think you said uh, in writing uh, that uh, you have a staff person or someone that you, the whole community, decide, well, you're eligible to vote, you're not eligible to vote. Uh, that's not the case, is it? Well, I mean, certainly the judge during election period, anytime the, the election judge has the discretion to determine if someone is, in, is or isn't in the district to vote. But what documents do you have to show that they are actually eligible to vote in one of the district three elections? Uh, if you were to go into an election day or, or early voting, you go in and you see a map on the wall for the district. And you see all the Swiss cheese and parts of it that's still part of the district. They all have addresses. Every one of them have an address. That's how we can get, it. We can get that from the county as well. And then we, we match that up from the, the county's list and then we make a list. But we don't ever say that that's an infallible list. It's the best we can do with what we're given. Do you have that list? I have the list as of the last election. Okay. Would you mind turning the, making a copy of the commission? This public information, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'll pass the bill for right now, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else? <laughs> yes. Chairman Canales. Thank you for being here, Mr. Brown. Yes. And, and again, I, I don't mean any disrespect. I'm just trying to learn from the process. I appreciate you being here. I'm trying to be as candid as possible, but and please don't take anything that I say and be disrespectful. But I'm listening to your testimony. And if anybody here can understand how an election is run in a water district, I'd really like to know because it is 
so confusing. And I will tell you as an American and as a Texan, when we elect government officials, they shouldn't be this hard. There should be a lot more transparent. And I'll tell you this, I hope we can get you commitment no matter what to start streamlining this process because I can tell you <clears throat> I had a candidate who wanted to run for that water district and I started to ask them questions. And I'll tell you when it was done, I thought it had to have been the most obfuscating process I've ever heard of in my life. And I will tell you the most that what? obfuscating. It sounds like everything's hidden. And so the list that Senator Jackson came for, there are a list of public information requests have been made of you, and y'all said you don't have a list. So when you started your testimony before this committee today, you said we don't have a list. You said that we get our list from the county. And then you went back and changed what you said. You said we hired two full-time lawyers that create a list so that we know who's on the list. You also said that you also exclude people if they come and buy a meter just to try to vote. If they what? If they buy a meter of land. So you have, do you have the authority to take people out of the rules if they're a tax-paying landowner that are in the water district that you feel have done that for the purpose of only getting elected? Never have done it. I thought that's what you just told the committee. You said you were against it and you all had that authority. No, no, sir, you misunderstood me. Okay, you said there are people, and we've had commissioners and people that buy land within the water district just to run. You just said that. I didn't say commissioners. Well, you said people, whatever you said. You said right. there's people that people come to the water district, buy plots of land to try not to the water district. They, they, that's, that's not our job. If they went out and bought from an in, a private individual that owned land <clears> in the district, they bought one square meter so they could run for the district. And you're against that. So I can't find anything law says you can't do it. And you don't remove those people. We did not. Okay. Now, going back to the list, because the list is important. Yes, the it list is. is what trans transparency is all about. And there should be complete transparency in all levels of government, including this one. So what I would tell you is that there have been public information requests made, and that's the response. We don't have a list. But your testimony to the senator is you spend copious amounts of money because you're hiring lawyers, and I know what lawyers charge. You're talking to one. And I would tell you, if you've got two lawyers that are helping you comply, and they're also compiling a list, you have a list. And you all have not responded to the public information request from people that made it as to who the list of qualified voters for. And you're saying that the problem is, we don't know who the next list is, but you can't even turn over the list you've already had. And so do you understand the process or the problem that, this, that the public has when you can't even turn over the list that your lawyers at the government entity has paid for? You paid lawyers to create a list and you can't turn that over to public information request. We're having to have a hearing about that. Can you do that? I'm, I'm asking you, you why, ask why can't you turn over? Let, let me, okay, let, why can't you turn over the list, Mr. Brand, when you're asked for it? Sir, let me tell you something. I just I just told him you could have the list from the last election. Today you said that, but there's been multiple public okay, information now, requests. Now, I've heard that. that. I've heard Don't interrupt said. me, Mr. Brand. I'm asking you a question. Go ahead. You. I'm asking the question, why can't you turn over the list when you're asked for them? I turn them over when I get them. Yeah, I know exactly what the request you're talking about. There was no list at that time. When did you start making lists, Mr. Brown? We don't make the list because the county list we get from the county is not accurate until the 30 days that you have to register before an election. You do not have an accurate list until the 30 days have passed. Mr. Brown, do you generate lists or not? After, the, the shortly before, we get an interim list from the county that we put together for early voting. Then we get a second list for the last, uh, for the election itself, like four or five days. So we make sure the county, let me tell you something else too. The county, when we ask them for a list, it's uh, 15, 14, 17 days before they can give us one. Mr. Brown, you said so, earlier the county gives you a list. We all understand that. Okay. You also said that you generate lists, Mr. Brown. Out of that list. Out of that list. Out of that list. So your government entity does generate a list? After we get from the county, after certain deadlines have passed during the election. And why can't people get a copy of it when they ask you for it, Mr. Brown? They have. They've just never asked for it once we got it. Okay. And okay, so, that's, that's how I can answer that. Okay, and the reason you're saying that that list, not, I, and I don't want to read into you what you're saying, but no. ask me correctly if I'm wrong, you're saying that that's the previous list, so we don't ever have a real current list. Until it's, when do you get the current list for the, the, let's just say tomorrow's the election. 
Tomorrow's the election. When would you have had the current list at tomorrow's the election for the people that are eligible to vote in your ward district? We asked the county how soon they can give us a list once the deadline of the 30 days has passed. How does the county generate that list? I don't do that. We, we, they, they put it out by precincts that we have that are, that are in our water district. And when they give you that list, do you have the ability then to exclude voters? Excluded? No, you mean, it, we, 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 we make somebody we, we, not eligible. Do you, can you later, I'm the county, I give you a list, there's 100 people on it. Does that mean those 100 people get to vote? No. So how do you, how is that determined? Well, so, so all 100 people can't. County gave you a list, 100 people are on it. You're saying not everybody on those 100 people get to vote. Who gets to vote then? You get to decide that? No, sir. Well, then who does? How, how, Tell we, take, that. we take the map of the land in the district, and that's how we determine who gets to vote. You determine. Well, actually, we, the board doesn't do that. We leave that to our engineers and, and the lawyers to do that. But the government entity, you're, that's passing the buck. You are the government entity. We're talking about the government entity. So your entity, after the county gives you a 100 people list, your government entity then determines which of those 100 you let vote, correct? As long as they're, yes, the ones that are in the district. So yes, now, when is that not? I don't, when you say determine, I'm just be clear. It's only those that we can identify land in the district and cross-reference that with an address. And it's not, and that's it, that's, you said earlier, that's a fallible list, right? Well, it, it, Earl, in the beginning of early voting, we know it is because the county's still letting people register. So don't you think we have a fundamental constitutional problem that you could potentially deny a real person who has the right to vote in your election, you just said you make mistakes. How do we fix that? Well, let me just say this. So hold on, let's just say Mr. Opal Brand is eligible to vote and the water district excluded him. Well, if he excluded me, it's only because I don't only land in the district. You said you make mistakes. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. And absolutely not, it's entitled not any of us in this room, nor the government. So, but, so we're, but you, you ultimately, so the committee understands you get a list from the county, then you trim that list down to what you determine is eligible. Or you're you saying to it, 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 is, it is a, a direction of the board to determine who on that list lives in the district. Mr. Brand, I'm not saying you. When I say you, I mean the entity. Thank you. So the entity, so I'm not attacking you and I'm not attacking the entity. I'm asking you, when I say you, please excuse me, the entity determines who's eligible to vote from the county list. Correct. Uh, based on information and facts, it is not art, it's not arbitrary or, or subjective. When is that list? When you've made that determination on who gets to vote in your election? When is that list made available to the public? On their request. When do you have it? Let's just say the election was today. When would you have had it? You've been doing this a hundred years. No, I'm not that old. <laughs> no, the entity. I'm not you. I'm not saying the. I'm saying the entity. Okay. When would the updated voter list for today's election in general have been provided to the public? Is it provided to the public? Upon request. So when would it be available upon request? The most accurate list? About five, six days before the election from the county. And five, six days before the election that's happening today? Five, six days before that election today. So if I was having an election today, the most accurate list of voters is five days before the election? Talk to the county. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not blaming anybody, and I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm I mean, I would, I would much ask. prefer if there was some kind of requirement that for the county to maybe provide that. Now, I understand, we understand this problem because they get inundated with these requests for people wanting to, to be, get on the voters' registration list. So after the deadline of 30 days, they still have to have two weeks or, or more to give us an accurate list. So just going back, just so we're all clear. We're all clear. That if the election was today, the list of eligible voters would be five days before the election. And what we would consider an accurate list from the county is. You think that's okay? No, I don't like it. Okay, then if you don't like it, let's come up with a solution. Then. Well, man, I'll be happy to sell well, well, let me ask you a question. Obviously, you're a, different, you're a separate layer of government that has to then do this. Why don't we let the county handle your elections? No. Why? 
if they're the ones coming up with the list. You know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, if, if, if an entity is abusing its authority or neglecting its responsibilities, absolutely. You will not find a more responsible district than District 3, as, just as much as many more other districts in this valley. Well, Mr. Friend, I would respectfully tell you that I'm not saying that you're doing anything nefarious, but I would tell you that if you are not, don't have an accurate voter roll until five days before the election, that is not responsibly handling an election. Well, that's again, my opinion. And again, you go back to the, to the uh, county and ask them how they can speed up what they're, how they process it. So you do agree we've got a problem? I would like it to be a little more streamlined, yes. Okay, so let me ask you another question. Let me kind of move on. You heard the senator saying, you said you don't charge an acre feet, but then you came back and said you charge farmers an acre feet or sell an acre feet of water. You said you sell the city 10,000 gallons at a time. Is that what that? No, 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 no. I, I just said that works. I just tell, told you that I, when I talk about water, most of them, I talk about 1,000 gallon okay. rates, not acre feet rates. Got it. But are you selling an acre feet? Yeah, oh yeah, all contracts are, no, no, actually the contracts are in it, 1,000, 1,000 foot, 1,000 gallons. And is that the way, is that the normal course of business for, for other water districts, or is that just how yours operates? No, I want to tell you, just like the city, you can call 22 of them, they all do it differently. Everybody does it differently? Everybody does it differently. Would you agree that it, when it comes to government and a, and a resource or, or a commodity so it's precious as water, that we might, we might want to streamline that from a government perspective, maybe from a top-down perspective, that we say, Everybody shouldn't be doing everything differently. I think the taxpayer might deserve some consistency. Well, we need to require the same out of the city. Well, we do it all across the board. I'm saying, right. so do you sell a thousand gallons or an acre feet? Ours is in, in thousand gallons. Okay. And do you sell to farmers in thousand gallons or an acre feet? We sell them in acre feet. Okay, so you do both then? Do both. So that you're clear. Okay. Now, when those have been calculated, and so the senators was the dollar different than mine, and so there is a difference, but what we do have in common is that you're almost close to 80 to 90 percent more than every water district that serves the city of McAllen. That's and, not true. Well, I'm going to tell you that I, and I'll show my numbers to the committee, and I would hope that you would share yours with me I'll and the committee. I'll gladly share them all. Okay, so we're, we can compare those, and we can agree to disagree at this point, but even if the senator's off, well, he's less of a dollar than mine. I have you at $114 an acre foot, even, with, even calculated by the 1,000 gallons. So I would tell you that we want to compare apples to apples. Would you agree? Let's ask this question. Assuming, and you're, I understand you disagree with me, and I'm okay with that. I, my wife disagrees with me all the time. <laughs> assuming we are correct. Assuming we are correct, and it's $114 per acre foot. And the other, and there is that huge delta. Would you agree that if that is the factual scenario, that there's a problem? You just said hypothetically, now you're saying factual. If that was the hypothetical scenario, would you agree there'd be a problem? But it's not. I'm trying, I'm here, I'm here to give you, no, I'm, I'm here to give you facts. facts. I'm not asking about the uh, facts, no. I'm asking you if there was such a huge price delta difference between every single person that's selling water, if it is, if that were the case, would there be a problem in your eyes? You're not going to give me that say, say, but hypothetically, no, everyone has a hypothetical. If you want facts, that's what I'm here for, facts. Our, our prices are for water and delivery, not the other two you're comparing to are delivery only. This, the United bought that water, my father bought that water over, I think, 30 years ago, and so they own it, they bought it, they didn't buy ours, but they bought theirs, and they're paying for just the delivery. Now, I'm trying to get you to understand how the, the difference, I mean, you're looking at contracts, because the other two contracts are delivery only. Okay, so then what I'd like to do is compare apples to apples. And I'll be happy to put it all together. And so, and so I'd like, and, and we're gonna do the same, because the committee needs that information, and I understand Absolutely. you disagree, and I won't tell you you're wrong, I wanna see the facts. And so, <laughs> because we're, we hear things, and that's why you're here to answer, and I appreciate you being here. Thank so now, Thank you. So you understand what the question, the homework is going to be from your side, because we're going to do the same thing. If we want to compare what services and what product you're providing, in particular, to the city of McAllen, right. and compare apples to apples. Absolutely. Do you, you have a problem doing that? Absolutely it? none. Okay. So I'd love to do it for you. So you already answered this, and I just want to make sure that the record here is clear, is that 90% of your revenue or sales is to the city of McAllen. 
at this point. That's correct. Okay, so we're not, and you, you converted your agricultural use to municipal. Okay, and you did that. And it, but as of now, the purpose has shifted, whether it was intended or unintended, the purpose for which your entity was created is no longer the purpose. It is now 90% would be selling municipal water. No, 90% is the income. 35% of our water is still used in agriculture. We have so 65%. 65% of which, of, of 5,000 acre feet of that water, we converted for the city at no charge. So 65% of your product is then sold to the city of McCown. That is correct. And that entails 90% of the income revenue stream you've got. Yes, sir. So even though it's not the majority of the water that you, even though it's... No, it's the majority. It's the, even though it's the majority, it still greatly affects your business is, from a business standpoint, an economic standpoint, your real money's coming to the city of Macau. Well, well, absolutely, no one can debate that. No, I'm just clear, I'm just trying absolutely. to understand. I'm not debating anything, but I'm just trying to understand. Okay, so. But understand too, we, that we, we told you earlier, our purpose was for agriculture. We had attempted, and we're attempting to move north to get to the farmers where they can get, where they are and where they need to be, which is outside the cities in open land, where they're not populated. All they need is water, the land's good, they just need water. And we're attempting to put a line out there and being blocked from doing it. Well, I, I'm not, I, and, and if you've got problems that I, we can help you with, I'm here to help you. Okay, I'm gonna call you. Okay, but I would also tell you this, I'm a huge supporter of citrus and farmers, and I will tell you that unfortunately, the city's growing, and so times have changed. And so moving forward to, so I can get through this, and I know everybody's time is precious. How long does each one of your board members serve? Other terms? I've been on the board for 20. Bill has been on the board since 1996. Well, what are the terms though? When you get elected. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you asked how long. No, been. the terms. They're um, four year terms. So now you can, now the question, so they're four year terms. When is the last time a new board member was ever elected? 12 years ago. Uh, well, we just had elections. Um, no, you're right. We just had elections and all of them as a as a one. So, but the last time a new board member, one board member took a new position 12 years ago. Well, that's just the election process if nobody challenges. I'm not, I'm yeah, not that's right, 12 years ago. 12 years ago was the last time. I'm trying to figure it out. Okay. Now, I will tell you no, that, and Representative, I will correct you on that, I'll correct myself. Um, under the water code, if a member is lost or resigns or dies or whatever, moves out of town, or moves out of the district, then we have, the, under the code, instead of holding an election, we have, the, we have the responsibility to nominate someone to fill out and finish that term. Gotcha. When we've had that twice in the, during that 12 years before the last one that was actually elected onto the board. So the newest member has been serving how long? Three years. And one of the questions, and I'm going to digress to begin the conversation you and I had, Mr. Brand, because there are multiple complaints. I've seen documents, I've seen the request, but I don't believe everything I read. So this is the question: Is how does your government entity handle public information? What's the process? Representative, whatever the law requires, and we certainly, I, every one that we get is sent to an attorney, and we process it as we're directed. Who's in charge of that? Um, over the years, several. Currently? Currently, uh, Randy Whittington. And Mr. Whittington, is he, so the process, let's just say Terry Canales sends a public information request for Water District Number 3. It is addressed to the Water District Number 3. It is open. It's a public information request. It then is delivered to Mr. Whittington. Correct. And then Mr. Whittington delivers it to the attorneys. Well, only if it's, it depends on what the request is. Okay. But if it's just a simple request, no. We, we, we just process it and go on. Okay. And has the district ever ignored any lawful requests that you didn't want to answer? To my knowledge, in the last 20 years, no. If I bring you lawful requests that have never been responded to, 
Are you giving your word that you will respond to them? If there's lawful requests. Request. If they're lawful requests, absolutely. Okay. Uh, how does the district track the land it owns? Like Mr. Sen uh, the senator has asked you, you don't know, there's no, there's no, um, yeah, so you track, you have to track the land. Of course we do. Okay. Of course we do. Can you provide the senator, myself, Representative Gera, and this committee with the current boundaries of the water district? Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Now, there is a, and you can probably know this better, there was a dispute with the city of McAllen condemned some land, paid one of the directors uh, and the district, and everybody claimed ownership of the land. Um, so, do you know what I'm talking about? It's now no, yeah, Bicentennial Boulevard. Yes, I know what you're talking about. I, yeah, I, I know what reference you're talking to. And I mean, I know this, the, but I, well, I wasn't really listening to what you said because it like, didn't ring with me. But you do know now. And you're it's not repeated to me. The question, the question is, are you aware of a situation where the McAllen, city of McAllen condemned some land, paid the director and District 3 for the same piece of land? No, sir, that did not happen. Okay, can you tell me what did happen in that situation? Okay. okay. Listen, this is, this is a little complicated. We can do it offline. I don't want to miss the committee's time. Hey, by the way, are you doing okay? Do you need to? No, I'm fine. Okay, thank you, sir. Chair, I look so no, no, no. <laughs> you, you, you're doing amazingly well. Um, um, I'm sorry. If you, if you need a stool or something, you know. No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, All right. So I'll right. just have this, have this go down. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Um, since the beginning of the district, over 100 years, we inherited. We inherited an overlap of our boundary lines. And I'm not going to tell you the names of them because I'm not sure I can remember. I think it was Hammond Subdivision versus Sidell County Water District number three. But they were lapped like 120 feet all the way through McAllen, all the way to Hido. Still exists today. I was, I challenged that with the Water District before I was on the board. And told them, no, I got, I got, I got warranted you. I got, well, after doing the research, it turned out that theirs was granted before mine. So when they did Bicentennial, Mike Pettis said, we're just gonna condemn all the land and let, you, you, let the district and all the, I think it was 17 or 18 landowners fight it out in court. I told Mike, Mike, that's not right. I said, these people don't even know that old land exists. They've been paying taxes to the county for land that belongs to us. I said, you let me, and I think it was up there, it was Leo Montalvo, let us go talk to each individual order, uh, landowner, and explain to them what the situation is and see if we can resolve it without going to the court and making them spend a bunch of money on us too. On 18 different cases, no thank you. Mike was agreeable to that. And so Leo Montalvo and I went through and we talked to them. I didn't even know half of them. We went and explained each one of them what the overlap problem was. And we were able to resolve all, every piece of track we were able to resolve without any litigation. And what we did was say, you know what? Y'all have paid taxes on this for 100 years, whoever they are. And we said, we're just going to split the baby with you. We'll take half, you take half, and we'll call it a day. And that's how that went down. There was no condemnation. Representative, there was no condemnation. There's no way that there didn't go through any condemnation. If it did, it was after the agreement was, was bought. Now, they may have done that illegal about it, but not really because we already agreed to sell it. They didn't have to go through condemnation with us. Did more than one person get paid for that property? I, uh, I, I said earlier about 17 or 18 landowners. Let me rephrase that. Was the land paid for more than one? For instance, by the people, by the people, by the private sector, yes. They bought that land. You know what I'm saying? We'll talk about it offline. <laughs> I'll be happy to talk to you about it. Do you have any more questions? Sure. For, for the time being? Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. I just have a follow up question. Um, Can I ask some questions? 
Uh, on the number of farmers, uh, you said you had 23 farmers? As of this morning. Uh, and they all uh, purchase uh, raw water from the district? That's correct. All 23 farmers? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Did I ask for you? I, I did ask you about it. Absolutely. All right. Um, so there's some dispute about the prices here, and, and I find it hard to believe that everybody can be that far apart. So are you telling us that the water that the city of McAllen is buying from you is not water for the most part that they already own. Right. It's water that you own. I'm doing the same that number three owns, <laughs> that, that the district owns. And and so you're charging them for the water plus the delivery fee. Yes, sir. And you're saying that the other districts, and by the way, when I did the math on, on an acre foot, 326,000 gallons, so you divide by 326, it comes out like 35 cents or something like that. And so and you're saying that the other districts, <clears throat> that any of those people that are showing a rate that's half of what yours is, which is what they're showing, right. Um, right. that that does not include both water and delivery. That is perhaps a delivery charge for mm -hmm. water that the city already owns. That's your testimony? Well, that's, that's what's, but as far as I know, that's how they operate. Now, they, the water districts themselves can tell you different. I know on United, I know that, that one because my dad bought that water for the city, for the city of Mangala. Yeah. He didn't buy it. So, yeah. Uh, is is number three required to sell any water to McGowan other than the contractual obligations? There's no no constitutional no nothing like that. No sir. And the, the funds that number three gets, um, they pay those handful of folks of eight or nine or ten that work for you, and then what do they do with the balance? Well, what what we do is when we, we sit down and do a budget, we'll take all our costs. And then we'll take our capital improvement programs that we have and help establish what that rate is. Okay. And then you plow it back in the district. Is that what you're saying? That money, we, ever since the, well, I've been to the district, every major project we've done has been, money has been plowed back. Every major project we did, we did with the liquidation of land. Okay. Not the increase in the rate. Okay. So the water rates then, they don't go towards the major capital improvements, you're saying? No, we actually, actually I'll tell you what we do is we take all our costs and then figure what thing, like right now we have a major issue that we cannot get resolved because of the predicament we're in at this time. We have one where the, that actually, actually threatens the city of McAllen with being flooded. But we do not have, uh, we're in the position we're in right now, we're not doing any capital improvements. We're having to hold all that because of the situation we're presently in with two lawsuits, of a rate case, and all five of my members being served uh, out of city Mayhem. Okay, so, and with the risk of more obfuscation, um, the, uh, I want to talk about those elections for a minute again. Yes, sir. Um, so, obviously in order to, and this is true throughout water districts, I know and a lot of people don't understand it in irrigation districts, but in order to vote, you have to own land in the district, correct? No, sir, not in our district. Not in your district? No, sir, our district is just like any city election. If you just live in the boundaries, you get to vote. So if you live in the boundaries, you get to vote. Now, okay. and the other one is, that would be, that's irrigation districts only. Water improvement con and control districts have uh, everybody, in, everybody inside the boundaries votes. So who can run for the board? Uh, anybody, <clears throat> anybody, it used to be when I first got on the board, you could only run for the board if you owned land, which was interesting because it was really a, we had some people who owned land and didn't live in the district, but they could legally right. run. Yeah, I've seen that. And they, could, and they couldn't vote, but they could be on the board. Right. So that law got changed about, I want to say seven, eight, maybe nine years ago to include, um, Anybody living in the district could run, but now as far as elections, it's always been that way since. Okay, so anybody that, 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 that lives in the district and is registered to vote can run. They don't have to pay a tax. And, and that law that changed was that statewide or did that just apply to the district? I think that's a state. That's a state. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure, but I remember I know Senator Mottler had a big issue with that in the, the BMA years uh, ago. Yeah, that is a state. It was changed. Mm -hmm. a state change. So, which is another big water district that I've been involved with over the years. 
And so this, the county elections office or county clerk, or whoever handles it in, uh, in this county, uh, is it the county you have elections office or a county clerk? Well, they're an election administrator. Election administrator produces a list to you of how many people are eligible to vote, how many people? No, sir. What we do is we take our map and find out what county precincts are in our district. Mm -hmm. And even it's just one little block, we have to order the whole thing. We get those and then we, because in our district, we don't have, uh, we have addresses, we have legal descriptions. We don't always have names on our on the list, of, on our irrigation list. So we have to pick out, out of each precinct we have to take our map and overlay it with the precincts and pick those people out by address. Okay. And then that's what we start with. And we know it's not a final list because people are still registering. Right. So the, the list- That's for early voting. Excuse me for I'm sorry. No, I interrupted you, I apologize. No, for early, that's for early voting. But then we ask for a final list that's more complete because you'll have everybody that registered 34 days before registered but even at that the deadline they told us when we talked to them it was 14 to 17 days before they could get us that list and then we had to extract it again to make sure we covered everybody which just goes to the five days before the election because it's not something you just do overnight so what i'm trying to determine is is for the sake of the committee is and, and i'm assuming that every water district in the valley goes through a similar process only control and improvement districts oh, okay only irrigation districts are different. totally different all right excuse me so when did y'all convert from a wid to a wcid uh no we were, we've always been a uh 26 26 26 okay so 1926 yeah, 1926. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I thought it was back there when I read the history of the district. So what I'm trying to determine is, you get this list of, of how many of voters from the county. By okay. precinct. Yeah, and that's where the elections office is, by precinct. Does it list every voter in the precinct? That's what we go by, I mean, okay. So, and then what you do is then you have to decide how many of those voters or which ones actually that live in the precinct 1A, for example. And live in the district. And live in the district. Yes. The, the county's not able to provide that service they to you. They do not, never have, to any of us. Any of the Water improvement control districts. And so you have to sit down there and sort out how many people, if there's 3,000 people living in precinct 1A, then you have to go through and figure out how many of them actually um, live in the district. Live in the district or own land in the district. Yes. Oh man, uh, they, do they, have, they don't have to live there, do they? Uh, well, we, we go by uh, we go by address because you got to remember people that live in apartments they have a right to vote, but they don't own land. So as long as that piece of land is in our district, be it apartments, be it uh, homes, they get to vote. Okay, and so they live in the district and they vote. And so you're saying that there have been times where where someone has purchased a square meter of land, obviously so that they would have a right to vote in the district or run for office. Because they didn't live or, or on land in the district. Yeah. Did any of those people ever gain board positions? No, sir, none of them. They were all be by 72 to 75 percent. And how many people vote in those elections typically? Um, we have about, I'm gonna say about 350 to 400 people in the district. And this last election, we have just under 100 people vote. And you said that you're willing to turn over the list that you used in the last most recent election. Absolutely. Which candidly probably won't change much to the next one. I mean, I know the city's growing, but I mean, right. yeah, if I was wanting to run a mail ballot campaign and, and for a board position, I could get a list from you, at least of the last people that voted. Well, actually, Mr. Chairman, you could probably walk to every door in like three or four days. I wouldn't have to bother that. All right. And, um, and you know, we passed a piece of legislation last time that I don't remember the terminology we used for it, but it was transparency and good government and governance and all that kind of stuff. And I, I candidly don't remember everything that was in the bill, 
but I don't know how much progress have y'all made towards achieving those goals? To my knowledge, we've completed all of them. And I'd like to hear something that someone say otherwise. Yeah. But I, to our knowledge, we've completed all of them. I bet we find somebody. Really okay. Well, I'm, 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 hoping, I'm hoping to hear them today. Just, just based on my no. experience in the district over the years, but I don't, I don't remember what was there. I should have made a list of it so we could talk about it specifically. But anyway, I appreciate that. At this point, um, if you're okay, you take some more follow-up questions? Absolutely. Good. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'm just a little confused. How many people live inside the district boundaries? 350 to 400. I'm looking at a map that shows your district boundaries and encompasses large swaths of neighborhoods in McAllen. Well, that's because uh, you're probably looking at the original boundary lines when it was formed. Okay. And you're saying there's only roughly 400 people who live inside the boundary line? Of the district. Of the district. I understand that probably over half the district's outside the city of McKenna. I understand. I'm okay. just trying to say human beings. Yes. Only 400 live inside the boundary lines. Yes. Then how could it be so complicated if there's only 400 potential voters to get a list out? It's not. It's just time. It's just time. It's, it's, it's not impossible. We've been doing it since I've been there. Can I, can I approach? Can you wait? Oh, yes. Can I approach? To vote in this district, can you vote if you just own land in there but you do not live in it? Yes. Okay. I'm living. No, you have to, to be able to run on the board, you own land or live. But to vote, you have to live. So if I own land but I don't live in it? Can't vote. You can't vote? No. Neither would anybody else. But, you know, I don't land in it. I get that. So if there's some guy bought a square meter of land to vote. He, he doesn't live there, so he couldn't vote. But they were they did it to run for the board because if you own land, you can run for the board. But they couldn't vote. That's right. Also, so you don't have to you don't have to live in it to be on the board. No, sir. Just so you own land. Own land. That's only for the, running for the board, not for the vote. Yeah, the, the, uh, yeah. I, I, I get your qualifications are. I don't have to live in some land I can run on the board, and so this guy owned the land, so he could run for the board. Uh, now, the, uh, this precinct, going back to you know what the chairman was asking me, and I, he might answer me. You get a precinct from the county, and the precinct is supposed to be the smallest entity that there is in politics. Everybody in a precinct is supposed to vote for the same thing. It's the name precinct. Are you saying that you get a precinct from the county, and some people vote in this district and some people do not. In that precinct? Yes. 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 Well, then that's not a real precinct. The county, why would the county give you a list of people that don't live in your district? Because I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, there's I, number one your problem is the county is not providing you with proper precincts because the precinct, everybody in a precinct votes for the exact same thing. There is no difference in a precinct. Right. That's the, the name of a precinct. Now we have to get like 35 precincts to pick up those 350, 400 people. Well, that, that, I mean, that's insane. That's the county is your problem. The, the number two thing, um, it's the list, this list that you're talking about of people, including these 30 day people to register to vote for 30 days before. Right. That list must be prepared by everybody. The, the county must give you that list before you have early voting. Yeah, but they don't have they don't have to find a list when early voting starts. That they're not following the law. How can they give you a list of qualified voters to perform an election if it doesn't follow the law of having that list prepared before the third, before early voting starts? Are you telling me the county's not doing that? 
I just kind of just the process I'm telling you, and that's what we have to do in order to establish a list. Well, I think your number one thing I would try to make sure the county provides. In a timely fashion. Well, it has to. It's by law, it has to. You can't have an election without a qualified list. Yeah. And that list has to be done before anybody votes on an early day. It has to be done before the. Well, it's, it's just the processing time, time that the county has. I mean, you got a million people living in the county now. And so, I, and they got a bunch of I understand. Yeah, yeah, so we, it we, takes, you know, with redistricting goes through and we have to redo all the precincts. All that has to be done beforehand before you can have an election to do it. Well, I just wanted to clarify two things about who's qualified to vote. And you had to live there, unless you want to be on the board, you had to own land but not live there. And then your precincts, your county precincts, that they should be given to you by the county in a, in a timely manner to, to perform this uh, election. And I think if that would be your case, 90% of the issues seem to be going away because then people wouldn't be complaining that you're cutting them out. They wouldn't know what the list is. So we have a list that we could give to somebody on the Freedom of Information request before the election. Yeah, it has to be done before the election. That, it can't be, the election can't be held without a qualified list. Yeah. yeah. All right, we've been trying to clear this stuff up, but uh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, maybe this won't work and be done <laughs> on, on that, but thank you. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I, I do have a follow up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I just have a point of clarification. You testified earlier that the county could not give you a list until you send them a map. No, that's not what I said. What I said is we get the list from them, and then we take our map, and then we take the addresses that are on our map, and we pick them out of the precincts, and we make our list for the election. Okay, so it's not the county that provides you a list. It's not the county that provides you a list and waits for the map. I mean, to me, it would seem that if you gave the map earlier to the county, they would be able to identify the boundary lines and those voters who are eligible to vote. Well, I'm sure, yeah. that's, that's what's so confusing about the elections. I mean, nobody really understands it except you. Well, there's a bunch of people out here that understand it. <laughs> well, you know, but the general public that has to vote. No, I think this is a learning lesson for y'all today. I think it's the first time you've ever heard this. I don't think you've ever heard this before. But it's not something we like. Yeah. And, and we would like something more more definitive, but I, we, we can only move as fast as the county gives us the list. So you would be you would have no objection, for example, it would be a county election department ran the, the election? No, sir, I would have issue with that. I take I would I would make that decision without board board participation. But you yourself wouldn't have any objections. No, I do have to as well. But I could be outvoted tomorrow. You have objections? I'm sorry? You have objections? Yes, sir. I do. You want to keep control of who votes who doesn't vote? No, sir. I just want to make sure that it's done accurately. And, you know, just like we have to entrust the county and county elections, and we have to entrust the city of Macau with their elections, and trust the water district with their elections. You know, they are. If you can show some criminal, if you can show some criminal violation, absolutely rip it, rip it away from us. As long as we're doing it by the law, we'll leave it alone. There are other water districts that do allow the election to run their elections. And that's a board by board and district by district and city by city. City of McAllen has had the county run theirs, and that's okay, it's their choice. We feel like it's our choice as well. And at this point, we've said no. Thank you. Um, we've said no. Now, I'm not gonna tell you, they, they, they won't say yes in the future, but uh, uh, that's where it is right now. Well, we're trying to figure out how to make it much easier and simple process uh, for you all to be able to identify uh, the voters early as well, I'd be happy to work with y'all on that. I would love to be working with y'all on that, particularly because it's got to take the county, and I don't believe uh, the water district has enough, uh, y'all probably have better, easier time at, at uh, doing it and adding, getting them involved to help us do that than uh, we would. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Kind of gives you a list, you run them through your strainer, those are your voters. Right? You're the strainer. You can give you a big list. You say you, you lay over lay your map like you told us. Then you your government entity identifies through attorneys, whatever, your government entity identifies those voters. Right. Who checks to make sure that that's accurate? Who's who's your checks and balances? Who's the county counties and the cities? 
rest of you. I'm telling you, if you, if, you know, it's called public service to the public servants that are you, you entrust that with. Now, if you've got some reason not to believe the board, right? The board, the board. And if you've got some reason to believe the board's not doing it right, then you need to address it. I'm that. not saying they're not doing it right. Okay. What I can tell you is that if you've got the fox watching the hen house, because you get to determine who gets to vote and who doesn't, and nobody gets to tell you when you're wrong or right. What do you want? You want, you want an oversight? I don't care. I don't care. But you don't have a problem with, with there being oversight and checking, making sure that the water district actually does have an accurate list. Can't do it ahead of time. Hell, we only have five days to know we vote. What I'm saying is afterwards, you don't have any problem turning over that list for examination to make sure that you had an accurate representative count of exactly who was to vote. Absolutely not. Thank you. So, um, I don't know, this is something that uh, staff can look up, but um, your WCID, your emergency service districts, any type of districts that are out there that are not crafted strictly along precinct lines probably has to go through, somebody has to go through some of the process. Where I don't see every water district in the valley. And, 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 and we, I don't know if y'all have emergency service districts down here, and I don't know, but I guess any district that's not drawn along precinct lines has to go through that. Now, in a perfect world, I would think that it would be sweet if I could take my map and drop it at the election administrator's office and say, uh, yeah, in three months before the election, or I know, I know you try to get it as accurate as you possibly can to accommodate those people that buy one square meter, but um, the, uh, you could drop it there and you could say, look, I don't want a precinct wide list. Can you do this piece of work for me to save us this time? I don't know, you know how people around the state do it when they have special use districts of one sort or another. It obviously do not conform with precinct lines, and there's got to be hundreds of those. I think I think that's a, I think that's a very astute observation, and it takes out the potential for governing your own voter roll list. Is to say here are the boundaries, give it to the election department. The election department generates the list of voters, and not the entity that's sitting there. Yeah, and not the board determines who and, gets to vote. And, and, and I don't know how other people around the state do it. That's why I said. I think your your idea. Well, in a perfect world, but I don't know that others may others may do it themselves. You know, I just don't know. Mr. Brand, let me ask you. You, you clearly know what the boundaries are, right? Absolutely. Okay, and so what would be the problem with submitting those boundary lines to the election department so they could give you the comprehensive voter list and the board itself wasn't making the determination to put it to its own strainer? As long as I'm not getting charged for it, I don't care. Gotcha. Do you think the election department would be able to, I mean, obviously you know the district and you know the landowners and everything, and those types of things. And so, um, you know, I mean, do you think that they would have the ability to do it as accurately as you do? Um, no, I don't. But that's, you know, the case. If, if there seems to be some question as far as the integrity of our board interpreting who votes, well, then you need to do something about it. But I'm going to tell you that, that you don't. And you tell me who's oversight for the county and their elections, who's the oversight for the city? We're just a government agency just like the rest of them. And we've not shown to be abusive or neglectful in our responsibility. Well, and typically in those other entities, counties and cities, you depend on uh, you depend on somebody to file a complaint. Somebody, yeah, that's right. I mean, somebody files a complaint. So if somebody filed a complaint against one of your elections, well then it would be researched. Absolutely. Did anyway, you have another question, Mr. Paul? Okay. We appreciate you coming today. Thank you, sir. And uh, appreciate your patience. Yes, sir. <laughs> so the chair calls and I apologize.